Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at NAB 2019. This is Darren Okada, ASC, who is a cinematographer and um, a director as well. So uh, he's worked on many things, feature films, TV series. We're going to just have a, a general chat about trends and, mm -hmm. and some of the work that you've done. One of the, so, Scandal, um, yeah. you were a cinematographer on that for how many seasons? The last three. I alternated with uh, Oliver Bokelberg, who had been on it since the pilot. Oh, wow. And Oliver actually asked me, he said, I don't know if you want to do this. I know you're back from doing this movie. He says, but would you ever be interested in... Uh... And, and I, I saw the show and I said, I don't know how you do all of that. I mean, there's a ton. Shonda Rhimes writes such great dialogue, but there's so much of it. And, it's, and it's fast. And it's it, fast. Yeah. Um, but I thought I was, you know, it, 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 I wanted to see if I could, if I could survive. It was a, it, to me, I challenged myself. Scared shitless, but it, <laughs> but it was great. We, it was a great, and, it, and it's one of the rare cases where you get to work with a, uh, another cinematographer who you like, and we just, we watched out for each other. And, but we just got along entirely. We have two entirely different personalities, but that's what's kind of, that's what's fun about it. Sure, so, uh, play off each other. Um, now, mm -hmm. when did you start directing Scandal? Because that happened That was season. actually the last season of, uh, of Scandal. And um, I, I never wanted to be like a director because I, because I love shooting and collaborating. Uh, and, and, and back when I was, you know, starting out in features, I didn't want directors to think, oh, but he really wants to direct, so he's looking over my shoulder. He's not working with me, but he's trying. And, and right. so I never, not that I was that way, but I never, I didn't want that out there. But now with, um, with the way the industry's gone, you can go back and forth and there's no stigma about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also, if it depends on your personality, uh, but I don't I don't want to just do that. So you don't um, want one because you say I, you enjoy I wanna, both. Yeah, right? and, and what, I'm, I feel really lucky now, and you know, this time in 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 uh, in our industry that you can you can do both and not have to say unless you want to specialize in one or the other. Right, you don't have to pick one. So but, how how did um, <laughs> being a cinematographer inform your directing and vice versa? Uh, well, I, I always looked at scripts from not what kind of great shot we could do, but, but how, how we could tell the story and reinforce what the mood and what the characters and emotionally what they were doing. Um, and, and that all came from starting out smaller, smaller films where you can't shoot everything. So you have to you have to pick what is going to really work. You know, it, it, it's not you can't. There's no time to just do a grab bag of every shot and every type of lighting scheme. So uh, so I, you know, from my earliest days, it was always let's see what the story's saying. What's the frame of mind of this character, and then psychologically kind of work towards uh, towards making that happen visually to reinforce um, the performances mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and also to, uh, to just have a, a film where the audience isn't watching thinking, oh, they didn't have much time. It's like they just shot that to get the words on film. Sure, but, sure. Uh, but, but, that, but all of that played into, um, into directing, which I had, I had no idea it was going to do that. Uh, I felt I was drawing upon that, um, but there was a whole other side of directing um, actors that was entirely new. So again, it, it's like stepping into the uncomfortable situation, but that's how you learn learn things. You know? Absolutely. So it must have been interesting for the cinematographer on the show with you directing. <laughs> well, unfortunately, well, Ol Oliver Bokelberg had been directing episodes of Scandal since the second or third season. He, okay. he had done some, but so I was hoping I was going to 
get to work with Oliver, but Oliver was in pre-production on the up on the following episode. So oh, okay. I was being asked for three months. I, I mean, I, I knew six months before that it was going to be this a particular episode number. I didn't know what it was going to be about. Nobody knows. It's, it's you know. It's, it's Sh Shonda Rhimes has every script is secret until we really get into it. Uh, so I knew six months beforehand, um, but uh, but I was being asked by the producers, who who do you want? Is there somebody you want to shoot it? Yeah. And I and I also felt that I didn't want to put somebody who has never been part of Scandal and the way. Oliver's orchestrated and the speed at which we go and, and um, I didn't want to put another cinematographer that hadn't experienced that into that position because sure. they would just be, it'd be they would be freaked out <laughs> I, so yep. um, so I I took one of the um, one of the uh, crew members I mean the obvious person would have been the camera operator but again we were splitting up you know, we couldn't afford to split that side up. So I thought, well, let's give let's give our DIT a shot. You know, he, nice. he's wanted to do stuff. He says, and I'm there anyway. Um, but also in that situation, it's a little different in that situation because uh, uh, we had we had to go so fast that it it I knew what the setups I wanted to do. I knew what the light should be. Um, so, I, 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 you know, I, I, it wasn't, it wasn't like start from the beginning, conceptualized. Like I had the concepts, I could, and it was just I was free to just speak to the operators, to the gaffer, to the rest of the crew, like I normally did, and um, and that's sort of how how that that went. Gotcha. Um, so this is day two of NAB. You've mm -hmm. been here. Have you had a chance to go to the Central Hall and check out some of the cameras, some of the new offerings? I I've went over there. I mean, that's that's like the Monday big crunch is the Central Hall. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of the cameras I'd seen before in prototype form, which which is great because you you can see what the possibilities are or or see what some of the some of the things to watch out and talk to the manufacturers. Sure. Um, but it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's turned into, as far as the digital side, it's pretty much no compromise imaging. And I, mean, I remember, you know, we, we, were, we were all here like a dozen years ago when it was, well, the trade-off is this and that, and uh, it's not quite the same, but maybe, you know, you did all these workarounds visually and on set and in workflow to, but now it's just it's as it's like film. The uh, the biggest challenge is um, what the size of the camera is and what the imaging possibilities are. Uh, and I think now it, it it's uh, how versatile that single camera can be. We, we were so used to making uh, film cameras be sort of a chameleon for any type of genre, whether it's, you know, if it's run and gun, a big studio production, action movie. And we were just so used to having that core camera body and then yeah. building out from there. Now we're looking at digital, all the new digital cameras in, in the same way. You don't want to pick a particular camera and have to re you know learn or refigure out how you want you know what you can do with it sure um, and, 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 it, and it's both in a physical sense because that's what you're moving and putting in the set and, and from uh, from what imaging you know what the images are so. sure and and each time you start a new job so the camera, you, you pick the camera for the project. It's not like you have a favorite camera and want to go with that. Well, I, I do have a favorite camera or favorite cameras, and because uh, I know them so well, and I know the size of them, I know how we can mount them, uh, 
how they how to respond with whatever the subject matter is. So, sure. so I look at those two. I I limit it in that sense, but I'm always looking at everything else. I mean, I, I've shot almost every camera on one particular, whether it's a pilot or a commercial. So and, you so you keep an open mind. Essentially. Absolutely. That that that's the one important thing is to is to always keep an open mind. And, and look at things that aren't even like cameras. Like for me, I used to always, look, I love the South Hall. Now, look at the South Hall now, now where you are, yeah. it's packed. It is packed. But it's interesting where it was, always, it was like the central hall, all this hardware. Yep. There's years, it was all stabilized cameras. It was Crane City. And then, uh, and here what it was, you know, editing other workflow things. Anything that was a new technology sort of resided here. Everything that was was had had a a, a, a history or an improvement on something was in that that's right that hall. Yeah. But, but here now, it, it shows how the how uh, how technology has changed so much because this actually is more like the core area to be. It is. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to let you get back out there and check yeah. out some cool stuff. But um, you, I wanted to mention that you are um, an Academy Governor. Yeah, yes. I mean, uh, I, was, I was very humbled and very surprised when uh, uh, my branch, or our cinematographer's branch, uh, four years ago voted for me to represent them. And, uh, and, and that's been great because we, we've been, I've always been involved with the Academy. I was on the Scientific Technical Council for 10 years, so I termed out. And you know, the projects in that, it was like ACES started with sure. that. Uh, we looked into, well, it was my pet peeve, was the early LED lights, lighting, and, and uh, figuring out why they're not all the same. And we figured it out. And then when we put out, within six months, we put out a, a report and a demonstration what it did was it changed the manufacturers the way they looked at it so now they had something to aim for sure and now you can look at all these li these lights are all they're great but yeah. but that's you know I had always been involved because I you always want to give back but but being a governor has been great because you can have a say in I've been, been doing a lot of things with education and outreach uh, one of the committees, my first committee was um, that they assigned me to was uh, was was education, which is and uh, now, isn't, isn't that what it's all about? Is, yeah, is education for the younger. It's for the, the younger next generation, generation. Yeah. and not you know that doesn't get thought of a lot, uh, but I know that it's it's important, and it's and it's fun to see what their minds are like because they're like they're not th thinking about. The history of everything else they've done it's it starts sort of fresh so yeah, so, there's, so there's the academy go program that's and it's this year's going to be the third year which is they an internship so they actually have young adults placed in companies i mean everything oh, from fantastic. from agencies and then last year um uh jeff jeff miller at disney uh and and our old friend leon silverman sure uh called me and said they were proposing a production track for 20 students, a prototype, let's see, we don't know what we're gonna do, but, so we, we met for about eight months on and off, and then uh, last summer did it, sort of an out of the box, out of the box thinking of how to bring about, for me it was ideas, you know, yeah. and, cause that's, and, uh, and, and it was, I guess a great, success because those young people have been in touch with everybody got a lot out of it and you know, it was really heartfelt uh, Warner Brothers gave us an entire stage for a week at, at and the ranch and uh, they didn't know exactly what was going on but, but when they when all these uh, executives and vice presidents just kind of drop by and walk in they see it's just this laboratory of thinking and, and we're all just kind of going with the flow and finding different things. Uh, it's, it's exposing young people to things that I 
couldn't get exposed to. Well, it's and very it's very cool, and they could probably check that out on the site, right on the yeah. academy site. Uh, uh, Oscars.org, uh, and you can look up uh, the the gold program. So. Fantastic, Darren. Thank you so much oh, for stopping by. Oh, my time, Randy. Chat. Thank, Great chatting with thank you. Thank you for everything you oh, do. Well, thank you. Very nice, Darren Akata, Randy Altman, Post Perspective, NAB 2019.